guys and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we are going to be pulling a vacuum on the AC system. Now the reason we're doing that is one, we're going to check for leaks and two, this will actually pull all the moisture out of the system because it's been open to the atmosphere from installing all the parts. So we're going to be using a vacuum pump and a manifold gauge and we're going to start pulling a vacuum on this and check for leaks. Let's get started. All right guys, so here's a set of manifold gauges. I just purchased this off of Amazon. Uh, basically the cheapest set that I could get. Hopefully this doesn't leak. I put a lot of Teflon tape on all of the fittings so that it doesn't leak or preventing it from leaking at least. So the blue line here is for the low side. The red line here is for the high side. This yellow line is for your vacuum pump and also for charging your refrigerant later. So what we're going to be doing is hooking up these to the high and low side of fittings on the lines and then we're going to put a vacuum to it. So before we do that, we're going to back, um, back all, back both of these sides up because what this does is when you turn it in, it actually activates the Schrader valve in the lines. So we don't want to do that yet. We want to put the, click it onto the line first, then we're going to twist it in to activate the Schrader valves. So we'll go ahead and plug these in first. All right. So the high and low side connectors are here. This is the low side. This is the high side. So all we do is do this undo this. These are the 134A uh, connectors that we did earlier and in, in the video before. And then take this, unwrap it a little bit. And it's supposed to just click on like that. And then once you click it on, you could open it up, but I'm not going to open it yet. This one as well, unravel it. And go to the end here. You might have to move the Charcoal canister to get in access in here. There you go. Now we're going to open it up by tightening up this valve, this end here. Like that it's tightened and it is open all right once those two are set up we're good then we're going to be hooking up this to the vacuum pump then we're going to open up the manifold gauges for the vacuum to start sucking all right so here's the vacuum pump hooked up all the way to the gauges so i am going to open these bad boys up and then we're going to plug this thing in and pull a vacuum All right, as you can see, it's already starting to pull the vacuum. You can see the gauges actually pulling to the 30 uh, mercuries, inch mercuries. Or... So it should be doing it for the, both the same side, both the high and low should be pulling. So we're gonna pull this for about 30 minutes and then we're gonna leave it and then we're gonna see if it leaks. All right, so it's been about half an hour. So what we wanna do now is shut these off first so that they're tight before we shut off the vacuum. So that's tight. Now we'll turn off the vacuum. Now we wanna see if it holds at this um, level and that it doesn't lose any vacuum for both sides. So we're gonna wait about, I don't know, an hour or so, and then we're gonna come back and check on it. All right guys, so it's been about an hour and as you can see, there has been no movement of the needle, which is good. That means there's no leaks. So what I am going to do is I am going to reassemble the car so that I could bleed out the cooling system. So what I'm going to do is disconnect the vacuum system. We still have to pull a vacuum for about 45 minutes to evacuate any moisture within the system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bleed the cooling system first, and then I'm going to hook this back up and then put in the vacuum for 45 minutes. Uh, after that, we could get ready to just charge the system. So for now, we're going to have to bleed the cooling system. So I'm going to do that quickly, and then we're going to get back to charging the system. All right, guys, it's been vacuuming for about 45 minutes now, and we are ready to charge up the system. Now, the refrigerant that I'm going to be using is this stuff here, the Red Tech 12A refrigerant. It is a direct replacement for 134A and R12 refrigerants. So... This is actually a perfect replacement. Lots of reviews that it works perfectly fine. So I'm gonna be filling up the system with this stuff. Now what we wanna do here is, firstly, we wanna close off these valves. There you go, closed off. 
and then we're going to shut off the vacuum. All right, now we're going to hook up the refrigerant to this line here. Once we hook up the refrigerant, it's going to flow into the system and we're going to activate the, the AC pump by turning on the AC inside the car and then it will just suck through the um, low side, which is the blue line here. But we'll keep the high side closed. Um, so once the high side is closed, we'll see some pressure build up here. We'll put a thermometer inside the car just to see how much colder it gets from now versus once we charge up the system. All right, to charge the AC, we're gonna need one of these taps. So um, it is a self-sealing um, valve on here. So what we would do is just screw this on. We'll need the special one. What I did was I just filed this one down. It used to be a point to pierce it, but I filed it down so that it is a flat nub now, just so that I could reuse this for the self-sealing cans. Um, the piercing one will actually damage the cans, but we'll be using two cans of this because it's six ounces. Um, so it's about 12 ounces of this refrigerant into the system. This because this 12A refrigerant only uses about, is, is only required 35% of the original system amount. And it requires about 29 ounces of R12. So when you calculate it out, it's just shy under 12 ounces. So I'm gonna fill out two full cans of this and then the system should be full. All right, now that it's tight, we'll hook this end up to the yellow hose. All right, make sure that's tight as well. Now, what we would do is we would just turn this in and then we would, um, it will pierce the can and then the refrigerant will flow into this yellow hose here. One of the things you have to do is we have to take this off and we have to bleed it. So like we have to bleed the air out of it because right now this line is full of air, this yellow hose. So we would just push this Schrader valve with like uh, a screwdriver or something and that would uh, like bleed it out. Once refrigerant starts coming out of this, then we're good just to start bleeding it into the system. So we're gonna pierce this can now. There you go, you heard it. It started activating it in there. Now we're just gonna get a screwdriver and bleed that out of the system. And then this is where you push it. Just make sure you don't get it on yourself. There you go, refrigerant is coming out. We've let the air out. You can feel it's really cold on the hands. There you go. So make sure you wear gloves when you're doing this. So then now we're good. We could actually start um, firing up the car so that it activates the, um, the clutch so that it can start sucking it in. Then we will open up the, um, the low side valve here. So let's fire up the car. So we have to turn on the AC to the AC on and to one and obviously cold. Now this is what the temperature is at currently. So it's around 30 degrees Celsius. So now we're going to start charging the system. As you can see in this blast, it's actually funneling this, the, the, the refrigerant into the car right now. And there's the AC. I'm not sure if it's activated or not. The only way to tell is seeing if the clutch is moving. So let's get a light and take a look. So you can see the clutch is spinning. So that means it is running now. The AC is turned on. And here and there, just shake the fan a little bit and it'll keep going in. So we're gonna do two pounds of this. All right, while, that's, while that can is still pumping in there, we'll show you the temperature inside the car. As you can see, I can feel cold air already. It's already at 10 degrees Celsius. So it's a lot colder than uh, before, that's for sure. So let's keep charging it. It needs another bottle still. All right, now when you shake this can, you kind of feel it's empty. You see the glass is no longer 
the glass on here is no longer um, the glass on here is no longer you know sucking any fluid in. So what you want to do is back this thing out. So it stops it from being pierced. Then you want to close the low side. Now with that done, we can actually detach this and then hook up a new can. And then same kind of procedure, take the can, tap it. Nice and tight. Now screw this one on. Screw it on nice and tight as well. Okay, nice and tight. We can pierce the can now. Yeah, I can feel the can that's pierced already. Same procedure, leave the system, from there, from there. There you go, the printer is coming out. We're good. Now open up this side. And this is our last can. Alright, so there's some weird sound coming from the AC compressor here. Yeah, I have no idea what it is. But we'll wait and take a look at it after it's all charged up. Alright, seems like the second can is all complete, so now we just turn this off. Now with this off, we want to do these ones to turn these off too. That one's off. And the high side is also off. So those are both closed off now, and now we can just pop these off. There you go, that's done. And now we just cap these back. Alright guys, it's official. We've got AC in the car. It gets down to about 10 degrees Celsius inside the car as per the thermometer. So I think that's pretty good. It feels nice and cold like every other car that I've had with AC in it. So I think that's a success. However, the AC compressor does make some noise when it's running the clutch. So after filming this and driving the car around, I noticed the noise only happens when the car is fully warmed up and at idle. If I add some throttle to it, the noise goes away. I have no clue what's rattling and the noise is not noticeable at all inside the car. It's likely the compressor, but I can't replace it anyways because one, I don't want to drain my refrigerant and then warranty it at Rock Auto. And two, they probably won't send me a replacement anyways because this was the last Matsushita they had for sale. So I guess I'll just run it as is. I'm not sure what it is. As soon as you activate the AC compressor, um, it's just starting to make this little rattling sound within the compressor. Um, I'm thinking it's probably normal or maybe not. I'm not really sure, but it's a little bit too much work to take it all apart anyways. I'm going to run with it like that. Um, it wasn't making noise at the beginning when I started charging it, but then now it's just starting to make this rattling noise. I'm wondering if it maybe it's overcharged. Uh, I'm not really sure, but it didn't really increase the, um, I mean, decrease the temperature, even though I added the two full cans in there. It's supposed to be about two full cans. So it is fully charged though. So we're good. We're going to just put everything back together and then we're going to just be enjoying the AC for the rest of the summer. Anyways, guys, I hope this video helps you guys out. If you haven't already, please comment, like, and subscribe, and share my videos. As always, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.